Great. So um, as you hear a little bit later from, 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 from Jenny, um, balance is a really important thing that, that all of us do. Um, it's not only a really important behavior for humans, it's actually really important for all other animals as well. And there's a lot that we have in common in the ways that we balance with other animals. And there's also a lot of things that are kind of different. And so what I'm talking about today is a, uh, is a mystery. Um, it's, a, it's a mysterious detective story of how birds balance. And so before we start, um, I'm just going to show you a couple of videos of birds doing some really crazy cool stuff. So I'm going to play some videos and hopefully you're able to see them. On the left hand side here, we have a bird, it's called a kingfisher. And this kingfisher is balanced on a tiny little twig and a twig is swaying in the wind. And what you should be able to see in the video is that the bird's head is completely still. The first time I saw this video, I was astonished. I thought somebody had photoshopped it and it wasn't real because it looks like the head actually just isn't moving at all. Even as the body is swaying back and forth with pretty large sways. This is a really cool thing that, that birds do. So we all do it too. There's a, some, some amount of keeping your head still because that makes it so that you're able to see things. But the extent to which birds do it is pretty astonishing. They can do this way better than we can. Not only do they do it when they're perched on a stick, and there it goes, it doesn't stay still for long. They can actually also keep their heads really still even when they're flying in the air. So there's a video on the right hand side of a red hawk. And you can see that it's actually flying and hovering in pretty severe winds. And it's staring down because it's probably hunting. Once again, you can see that its head is completely still, even as its body is doing some crazy stuff. Okay? So, and this is not just a, 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 um, a hunting bird or a kingfisher behavior. It's actually something that lots of birds do. Um, those of you who, um, if, you ever, if, you get, if you ever get your hands on the chicken, you can actually try picking up the chicken and swaying its body. It's going to do exactly the same thing. People do this with the owls as well. It's a really fun thing to do. You can, there's lots of cool YouTube videos of this behavior. And so the fundamental question here that we were asking, and lots of other people have also asked, is how do birds keep their balance, even when they're balanced in a tiny little stick, and how do they keep their heads so still? So there's a lot of different aspects to this. And one of the aspects... Um, is something that you hear later about from, from Jenny, which is a, what's called the vestibular system. And the vestibular system, as along with vision, are different contributions to this balanced behavior. Um, so birds have a vestibular system, and it looks actually remarkably like the human vestibular system. It's what's called the inner ear, and it lives inside their ears, just like we do on the left side and the right hand side. So in this project, um, what I'm talking about is a, uh, is, is a, is a work with good friends. Um, so I'm working with Katie Stanchak and David Krikal to solve this mystery of the idea that they might actually have a really cool specialization in their lower spine, basically above their butt, that also helps them achieve this really cool balance behavior. This is something that's called the lumbal sacral organ, which I'll also call LSO for short. And um, I'm gonna go over a little bit of the anatomical mystery, why we think this, this is so cool and um, some of our ideas about how it might work in the birds. So the first thing about birds is that they have a skeleton that's kind of like ours, but it's also not exactly like ours. So when you see a bird that's perched on a branch, um, this is the equivalent of what your skeleton would look like if you had to be crouched and, and, and perched on a, on, on a branch. And so you'll see there that um, it's, it's, uh, it's butt, it's kind of, you know, in a weird position. And if, if you had to adopt, you can try this if you want to, try to get down on the, on the ground and see if you can uh, put your body in that position to, to, to be like the bird uh, crouched down in that position. And so there's a lot of similarities um, between, between humans and birds. And one of them is that we all balance on two feet. Lots of other animals have more than two feet. And so for them, balance is a, is a different challenge. But we, we like birds balance on two feet. And so balancing on two feet um, is, is difficult because you're basically on the verge of falling over all the time. Even just standing still, you're almost falling over. And if you don't, if you don't believe me, what you should do is try to balance something like a stick on your finger. If you don't actively try to balance it, it will fall over. This is a very unstable confirmation for a stick to be in. And you're basically a, a standing up stick, just like a bird is, right? Um, this is a fun exercise to do. 
What the birds have that we don't have are a couple of things that are special about the piece of bone that's right above their butt. And um, it's in particular, there's a piece of bone called sensacrum, which means that all of the spinal vertebrae in the very bottom of their spinal cord, instead of being separate pieces like it is in ours, instead of being separate bones, they're actually fused together into one gigantic bone. And it's also fused together with some of the bones in their hips. Now, if you've ever, um, next time you, you, you pay attention, um, like at, uh, when you're carving up a chicken or a turkey or something like that, you can actually find this piece of bone. It's a very big piece of bone right in the very back of the bird. And so if you zoom in and look inside this special piece of bone, the sensacrum, what you'll find is that it has some really interesting ridges in it. So I'm going to play this video. This is what's inside that sensacrum. And what we're looking at is the negative space inside that piece of bone. Like what would happen if you injected paint into it and then you cracked over the bone and you saw the shape of the paint. That's what we're looking at here. And in particular, what we're looking at is that the, the negative space, the bone actually has ridges in it. It has these canals that look a lot like the canals that are in the vestibular system of the inner ear. So, in addition to these canals, there's also a couple of really cool pieces of this anatomy that um, has been mystifying biologists for a very long time. So this green egg shape thing that I've highlighted there, it's called a glycogen body. And it's basically a jiggly piece of soft tissue that actually sits right in the middle of the spine. And there's a couple of other specializations about this piece of the spine that makes it really quite different than anything else that we've seen in other pieces of spine in other animals that have spines, or even in other parts of the bird spine. So this specialization is, uh, is something that's been, that's been known for a little while. And what we started to do was we worked with uh, our local Burke Museum of Natural History in Seattle because they had a giant collection of bird bones. And we, we basically scanned all of them. And this is the same type of scan that you, you might get if you go to the dentist. They'll scan the, they'll take an x-ray of your teeth, or if you Break your, if you break your arm, you'll go to the doctor's office and they'll take a scan, x-ray scan of your bones. This is the same thing we did there, except we do it in 3D. So we can look inside the bird bones from the museum without really hurting them. And after we did this, we realized uh, a couple of really cool things, which is that all living birds have one of these really cool ridged canal-y things inside their, um, in, in, inside their, the, the, the fuse and sacrum of their butt. And uh, they come in different shapes and sizes. Um, and sadly, we looked in basically all other animals that have a spine and we don't have them. This is kind of a cool bird thing. Um, the second thing we realized um, is that the, these ridges actually have some variability. They're not the same in every single bird species. So you'll see here an example from the Pacific Swift, which is a wonderful bird that flies around and is very good at flying. And it has these ridges, but they're not very prominent. They're kind of, you know, they're there, but they're not very big. You can see that in the middle, in the green, that's what it looks like inside the, the sensacrum of a penguin. And on the right-hand side, you see a funky little bird called the tawny frogmouth, which has these gigantic canals in the negative space of the sensacrum. And so there's variability among all bird species in terms of how big they are, which led us to the idea that, well, maybe this has actually something to do with their life habits, what these birds actually do, because there's all kinds of birds and they have different life habits. Some of them fly, some of them don't fly, some of them swim, some of them don't, stuff like that, right? And so we looked over all the life habits of the birds and tried to find some trends with respect to the size of these canals. We found something interesting, which is that birds that perch, which is to say that they can actually hang on to something like a branch and balance there, versus birds that don't really perch, like ducks don't really perch, they swim, right? Swifts don't really perch, they just fly and they kind of hang on a rock, that's all they do. What we found is that the birds that perch and are really good at perching tend to have really large, more prominent canals in their LSO, which is a, a really interesting suggestion that, that this structure might be bigger because it helps them balance on perch. So, but how does this work, right? So right now we have an anatomical mystery and some ideas that it might be important for sensing movement inside the helped birds sense these movements, but how could this possibly work? Well. This is where the this is where the the edge of our knowledge ends, right? And so now we're kind of we're kind of speculating. We have some informed ideas about why this might be working and how it might be working. 
And this is also informed by ideas that, um, that are coming from our understanding of, for example, the vestibular system and the inner ear system that is much better studied in animals like, like humans and mice. So the first idea is I told you about this green egg shaped thing, right? That was just hanging out right in the middle of the spine. And so <clears throat> I'm gonna call this the jello jiggle hypothesis, which is that, that that green piece of squishy ball there is actually kind of like a piece of jello that you put on a plate. You put a jello on a piece of plate and if you shake the plate, you'll notice that the jello is gonna jiggle as well. And so that jiggling can be sensed inside the spine to detect movement of the body. The second hypothesis, I'm going to call the shaking bottle hypothesis, which is that inside those canals, there's actually water. It's not, it's not technically water, it's called cerebral spinal fluid, but it's basically like water. And so if you imagine a bottle full of water and you're just going to have a bottle of water right here, try not to spill it. If you just shake it and kind of go like this, you'll see that the water is sloshing around and moving on the inside. And so that movement of the water as the body is moving inside the canal could be could be sensed by cells that are specialized to do so inside the canal. And we don't really know exactly what's going on here. These, I think these are two very good hypotheses. There might be more of them. It could be both, right? It doesn't have to be one or the other. And so these are all the different kinds of mysteries that, that we are now, uh, we're now investigating in terms of how could this possibly work. And that really comes down to what does it mean to really understand how this works? Right? And so as scientists, we think a lot about not just that something may be happening, but what are the different ways that it could be not happening? And what are the different levels that I can describe something might be happening? I talked a lot today about the anatomy and uh, this, this really striking structure that exists in birds that doesn't seem to be anywhere else. But really, we want to understand it at the level of the organism. How does it affect birds as they're actually flying around, perching, hunting, doing all the things that they do? Um, there's, the, there's the anatomy and there's other anatomical mysteries that I haven't gone around today. How does this get integrated and work with the inner ear and vision and other parts of the system in order to produce these behaviors? And what are the different cells and molecules that are inside this putative balance organ that makes it possible for it to, for example, detect things like the sloshing of the water inside the canals? These are all the different things that we think about. Um, and so this is a this is a, a really interesting anatomical mystery, and I'm glad I got to share it with you today. Thanks so much, Bing. Um, uh, there are a couple of questions, so we'll start with small ones. And I feel the birds because birds are believed to be descendants of dinosaurs. So do you know about dinosaurs? Do do dinosaurs balance with their butts? That's the biggest that question because they had some of them in books. Oh, that's an excellent question. I desperately want to know the answer to that question. Uh, we, uh, we don't know. People, um, I should say that Samantha and <laughs> Isabel, uh, Adele for Isabel, were asking that question. Yeah, Can that's a great question. Um, yeah, so so the dinosaurs, um, we don't know. We actually have a uh, we have a we have a side project where we're in the middle of trying to figure out. And as you know, with dinosaurs, we can't examine any of the living dinosaurs. So all we can do is look at their anatomy. And it's a matter of finding the right specimens and partnering with the right museums um, that are around the world to try to figure out if they can have a sufficiently well-preserved specimen of, of dinosaur for us to scan in the same way that we've scanned all of the living birds that we've scanned. Um, we do know that um, there are a couple of dinosaur species where they have a, what's, what people have thought of as a, uh, an enlargement in the cavity of their spine, right around the area we were thinking about, right in the back of the back of the spine, right near the butt. Um, what's not known is whether or not, in addition to being an enlargement, whether or not it has these ridges, right? And I don't know, we might get lucky and actually find them. We are in the middle of looking. I really, really want to know the answer. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be really, yeah. really cool. And once again, linking birds and dinosaurs again and again and again.